This week's episode is sponsored by Easy Roller Dice and their new Color Spray Dice Kickstarter. These affordable, colorful, and high-quality dice are perfect for building a personalized dice collection on a lightweight budget. The campaign aims to unlock 20 unique color and font combinations, so you can have the perfect set to match your characters, spells, and monsters. There's also add-ons available for Easy Roller Dice Company's trays and cases. We've been using their dice trays for years now at our game table to keep all our dice all together in the same place. Visit EasyRollerDice.com or follow the links in the description below to get in on their Kickstarter. And now, on to this week's episode. Greetings, my name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the, the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. Welcome to our channel where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for players and guides for Dungeon Masters. We upload new videos every Thursday, so please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. In this episode, we're going to be breaking down how we run random encounters in our games of Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. Random encounters are a really iconic part of Dungeons and & Dragons and have been for years. But it can be difficult to implement them in a way that helps flesh out the adventure and the narrative that is happening at the table. So today we're going to look at the system that we have used to help make random encounters still feel random enough to be interesting but help flesh out the adventure. If you've watched any episodes of our Drakenheim live play campaigns, you might have seen our random encounter system in action, and we get tons of questions asking what the rules are, how this system works, because it's so fast in play that it barely gets noticed and people wonder what it actually is going on but it has a really big impact on how we play Dungeons and & Dragons. And so today, we're going to open up behind the scenes and talk about how the system that we've been using in our campaign works and how to make the most of it at your game table. There's a lot to discuss, so let's get rolling. First and foremost, random encounters encourage people to think about the world as more of a system rather than a railroad, with danger being a potential around every corner. This way, the players don't exactly know when they're going to stumble upon a group of enemies, but there might be one everywhere they look. And in fact, one of the most magical things about using random encounters is not even the dungeon master knows exactly what's going to happen next. This makes the world feel vast, expansive, and mysterious, like anything could happen, and creates unexpected surprises that can really add a lot of depth and role-playing into your campaign world. On top of this, random encounters add a little bit of action and surprise and stir things up at the table for groups that are maybe taking too long or are being indecisive. It's a good way to add something into the night of D&D that maybe wouldn't have been there otherwise. Executed really, really well, random encounters add to the atmosphere and build a feeling of suspense and tension as well. They introduce unexpected monsters and complications, which can drive the narratives in really unexpected ways, such as when a group of monsters show up, and rather than fighting them, the players decide to strike up an alliance with them and tackle the dungeon together. Random encounters are the intersection of preparation and improvisational DMing, which meld together beautifully to teach you how to prepare for the unexpected. This is a great tool and asset to have as a dungeon master, and random encounters are the exclamation point at the end of it. Learning how to use random encounters properly will teach you how to improv better as a dungeon master and also help you learn about what you need to prepare. It is inevitable that your adventure is going to go off the rails. The players are going to do unexpected things and so the world needs to respond to those unexpected things with surprises of its own. Having the ability to run a really great random encounter will give you the ability to add unexpected twists and be able to build adventures on the fly at the game table. 
Now, there are a few problems that come up with random encounters in the way that they are portrayed in the Dungeon Master's Guide and other books. A lot of these random encounters actually have a chance of putting in a random monster in a random location that maybe doesn't make a lot of sense and doesn't help add to the narrative that is happening at the table. An example might be that the players are on a long journey to a long forgotten temple in the woods that is filled with undead. And then they stumble upon a group of trolls in the woods and you suddenly have to start imagining, well, why are these trolls here? How do they fit in? And what is the story behind them? And if you haven't thought that through, the players will just kill the trolls and move on without asking a second question. What this ends up doing is not really helping us tell the stories we want to tell, uh, portray the themes that we want to portray and really just adds to the campaign in a way that makes the players have to deal with random stuff that doesn't matter. Worst of all, sometimes the random encounter tables can yield encounters that are too difficult or too challenging for no really good reason and just result in a meaningless combat encounter against completely nameless enemies. There's no room for puzzle solving or role playing. Random encounter tables are also a little bit clunky to use at the table. When you're using them and you have to improv an entire scenario, this takes time away from the game while you try to set up why the monsters are there, a cool battle map, and get everything ready for this random encounter that just happened out of nowhere. Because of that, it's not quite intuitive as to how you're supposed to quickly and efficiently add one into the game without bogging down the play at the table. When random encounters are used poorly, they waste time and distract from the tension of the main encounter. They create something that has no meaningful stakes and just doesn't make sense and ends up just being a boring combat slog that had no purpose or point whatsoever. I love a great random encounter table as much as the next person, but at the end of the day, a random encounter table in the Dungeon Master's Guide or in an adventure module is not something that I want to be using at the table. Instead, I'm going to use that as an idea generator. I'll roll on a random encounter table to maybe give me ideas for what I'm going to prepare. But instead of rolling completely randomly, what I like to do is create two or three encounters that I can drop into my adventures at any moment. Sometimes these can even be memorable and really important encounters. You might have noticed that in the random encounter tables for Curse of Strahd, there's a chance that Strahd himself shows up. And there's a lot of narrative power that comes from putting the important NPCs and the major villains in the hopper of the random encounters that you can suddenly throw on your players. Instead of using these random monsters, use your entire cast of characters and bring them in in an unexpected way. You want to make sure that you are planning these encounters ahead of time, not at the table during the game. Rolling ahead of time will allow you to create more thematic options for your random encounters. This way monsters make sense, the environments make sense, and all of it adds to the narrative and themes of the location that the players are traveling through. If we use that same example as before of them traveling to the long forgotten temple filled with undead, making a few themed encounters that hint at the undead in that area and might have a few different types of monsters or even a bigger threat that could appear, drawing their attention that they're getting close to the location that they're setting out to find, is a great way to just ensure that your random encounters are telling the right stories and themes. What we're then going to use is our system to determine not what monsters show up, but see when and where they appear instead. We're going to always use our best judgment as dungeon masters to decide what of the encounters that we've planned is the one that's going to happen. We're not going to leave that completely to random chance, although we might have generated a few things randomly in advance. Instead, Let's look at the system that we actually use when the dice get rolled to see if a random encounter is going to happen. So the way that our random encounters work is you are going to ask all the players at the table to roll a dice when one of the following happens. First, you can just have them roll about once per hour of the session or of general travel time in the universe of your game. Or you can have them roll during any period of indecisive discussion or idleness in a hostile area. 
This is my favorite way to use this, by the way. When my players are having a discussion or an argument or not sure what to do next, I like to remind them that they are wasting time by having them check for a random encounter. Another great option is when they are traveling from one location to another, which is one of the most iconic ways to use a random encounter is during those long travel episodes. Just use your best judgment on this. If the players are constantly bouncing from one location to another, you might not want to have them check every single time, or you might bog down the game with random encounters. And the last great option is when they are resting in a hostile area, which really helps bring the fear to the players for deciding to try to rest in a place where they could easily be ambushed or attacked. This makes short rests in hostile areas feel much more real and threatening to the players. I also use this when the players want to do something like thoroughly search over an area or spend several hours doing something like digging a ditch or building some sort of makeshift defenses or whenever they're generally spending a lot of time in one area where there's hostile monsters. This is encourages the players to have a little bit more thought before they say, oh yeah, we're just going to spend the next six hours combing over every single part of this dangerous dungeon while there's undead monsters and ghosts roaming around so that we can make sure we find every last bit of treasure. The idea here is that when all the players at the table roll a dice, if they roll any ones, an encounter is triggered. Now, which dice you choose to roll might depend on how dangerous the environment is or how many players are at your table. In the worlds of Drakenheim, we use a 1d6 option because we only have three players. You can use any dice you want between the d6 and the d20, and this will change the percentage chance of having a random encounter, depending on how many players are rolling and how dangerous you want it to be. There's a quick table of references that you can use here. I use the D6 with my three-player group because I love having random encounters happen and I increasingly rely on this as the way of driving the narrative forward. So I like that uh, there's really a 40% chance of one of three players rolling a one. You might not like your odds to be that high, so if you have, say, a group of five players, you might use a D20, in which case there is a roughly 20% chance that one of those players will roll a one. Now, rolling a one is not the only thing that we do with the results of the dice, however. We can make sure that the results of the other player's dice have an impact on the encounter as well by using the other results to drive the circumstances under which the encounter occurs. So here are some examples of the way our system works using a 1d6. If at the table there is a roll of a 1 and no 6s, an unfavorable outcome or circumstance happens for the next encounter. If the players all roll the dice and nobody rolls a 1, but at least one player rolls a 6, I'm going to give the players favorable circumstances for the next encounter. Maybe they have the opportunity to gain surprise over their enemies, or they get some sort of defensive or terrain advantage because they're able to sneak around and luck is on their side. If the players roll both a 1 and a 6, this is going to be mixed results. The situation has to change in some way, and the party is going to have to come up with a new plan. One of the other things that I like to do with the 1 and the 6 result is the players have a really nice reward when they defeat the encounter. So if a 1 and a 6 is happens, there's a complicating random encounter that it occurs, but there's a key clue or piece of treasure that the monsters or adversaries that they encounter have with them. This gives the players an opportunity to experience a setback, but then compensate for that setback by finding something important. If the dice are rolled and there are no ones and no sixes, this just means that nothing happens and they have avoided a random encounter for this time. However, if multiple ones are rolled, the situation is going to get worse. The random encounter might happen and there might be additional reinforcements or bad things occurring. And what happens if every single player rolls a one? Well, what's the worst that could happen? It happens.
We had mentioned that using the boss monster or the bigger threat within the location might be a great choice for a random encounter. And having that as the multiple ones option might be a great idea. If they roll multiple ones, now's the time that they have to face the villain before they were prepared to. By tying the check for random encounters to the player's actions, such as when they're idle or spending a lot of time in one location or taking a rest, it means that those choices, which are often strategic in nature, have meaningful stakes and a meaningful risk. But it also means that the random encounter that occurs is not necessarily going to be something that is just a pure resource drain on the party and a combat slog. We've taken the time to make sure that the encounter is, that is going to happen is going to be meaningful in some way at the same time. So before you start your game, you want to plan out a few encounters, some that are more favorable to the party and some that are really dangerous for the party. If you create a few encounters that have that sort of scale, maybe throwing in a magic item that you could use in case of mixed results or a positive outcome, and a villain that you can use in case of a really bad outcome, you now have all the preparation you need for your players to roll the dice at the table and be ready to implement a well thought out and well prepared combat or social or exploration encounter that will make the world come alive and make the player's agency and choices feel more real in the moment. Having a set of circumstances that can be applied to any of your random encounters, such as unexpected reinforcements, surprise, a magic item, Characters that are willing to negotiate or offer clues or even a change in the weather will mean that your random encounters stay dynamic in addition to presenting interesting options and consequences to the player's choices. You set yourself up to run a great random encounter by preparing the components of great encounters on their own and mixing them and matching them on the fly to respond to the circumstances that the players have created. This means that unexpected things are occurring. You are responding to the way the players are acting, the choices that they are making, and how they are moving through the adventure in a way that doesn't feel like a railroad. It almost always feels like the players are responsible for what happened and that things could have gone differently. As a player, when these random encounters occur, they actually feel more rewarding and really tie you in to the game that is happening at the table, and you and the other players around the table get to work together to solve the ongoing issues and threats that are presented. Not only that, but it does add a sense of urgency to navigating hostile environments. Every time that the dungeon master asks for a d6 roll because you've been arguing about what to do next too long, it suddenly triggers you to say, okay guys, we need to make a choice because things could get out of hand really quickly. So it not only helps to present a more narrative element to random encounters, but it also allows the players to push the story forward on their own terms, just being nudged along by the dungeon master. We'll have a link in the video description below that's a small Google Doc that summarizes the rules that I keep pinned in my Digital Dungeon Master screen for using this, along with a few additional tables that I use to help generate circumstances and a short little list of fun locations that you can use on the fly that just add a little bit more environmental dynamism to the random encounters as they're generated. If you want to see how this actually works in play, these random encounters basically happen in almost every single episode of our Dungeons of Drakenheim and Shadows of Drakenheim live play campaigns. So check those out if you want to see how this actually feels at the tabletop. It's very, very fast, but the part of that is comes from knowing how to use the improvisational skills and the game preparation skills in tandem with it, one another to generate the unexpected results that create memorable encounters. So this has been a look at our house rules for random encounters in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Tell us about how you like to do random encounters at your table in the comments below. The videos that we create on our channel are made possible thanks to the amazing generosity of our Patreon supporters, and we thank them very, very deeply. If you're enjoying the work that we do here on YouTube, please consider checking us out on Patreon by following the links in the description below. 
If you want to see our rules for random encounters in action, make sure to check out our live play in the Worlds of Drakenheim, which airs Tuesday nights from 6pm to 9pm Eastern on twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. We also have all of the previous episodes of those shows right up over here. We also have plenty more tips and tricks for Dungeon Masters in our video playlist right up over here. Please subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time in the dungeon.